think back to those days when you were pregnant and you were building your expectations of what holding your baby would be like. You were creating images in your mind of what breastfeeding or baby feeding would be like. You were making decisions about how you would sleep, how you would feed your baby, what your birth plan would be. Or if you're in that situation right now, I encourage you to create images in your mind of what you think it might be like. And I know sometimes we're afraid to do that because we don't want to build up our hopes and expectations and then have them dashed away by changed plans or by differences that happen in the postpartum period. But last week, I had the opportunity to go to the Pioneer Valley Community Baby Shower, which is this amazing annual event that happens in Western Mass in Northampton, Massachusetts. And it's put on by a couple of amazing organizations that come together and allow various people like me, IBCLCs, postpartum doulas or birth doulas or organizations that support families in the early weeks and months come together and show families who are pregnant or newly in the postpartum phase or just in that time of thinking about having kids to know what services are in their area. And there's this amazing group that is one of the sponsoring organizations called the Village Closet. They bring a bunch of free baby items that families can shop through and look for things that they might need for their current or future babies. And while I was there, I had the opportunity to talk with people about their baby feeding experiences or their baby feeding hopes if they were expecting. And so I'm so delighted to offer you just little snippets from a variety of people. And as you listen today, I want you to think back to your pregnancies and think about what your hopes and dreams were or think back to your baby feeding experiences and think about your highs and lows and see how they compare to what their expectations and their hopes are for feeding their babies or what their, their favorite moments are from feeding their babies or what their difficulties were. Enjoy. When I began breastfeeding, I was blindsided by how difficult it was. I may have thought I was prepared, but having only known a handful of people who had ever done it and only seeing it up close a couple of times, I had a huge learning curve. Since then, I've become a doula, a childbirth educator, and an internationally board certified lactation consultant, or an IBCLC. I'm your host, Lo Nigrosh, and I welcome you to the Milk Making Minutes, where we explore breastfeeding struggles and triumphs through the lens of systemic and cultural barriers, so that you know your baby feeding struggles were not your fault, and your triumphs really are the miracles you feel they are. Hi, Stephanie. Hello. What are you most looking forward to when it comes to feeding your second baby? This time I'm much more prepared than I was last time. I really struggled with supply and now I know a lot more things I can eat or how to power pump and stuff like that. So I'm hoping it's easier this time. Yes, me too. I hope it's so much easier. Hi, Becca. Hi. What was the most difficult thing about breastfeeding your baby in the beginning? When he was first born, his latch was very clampy and bitey, and it really hurt at first, and I almost basically just gave up. But I pumped for a few days, and then that kind of gave me a break and gave him a break, and then we went back at it, and then it's been fine. <laughs> I love that. You always just have to take the next right step. There's never like a final moment when it like the indecision. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thanks so much. Thanks. <laughs> By the way, I never view somebody who has made a different plan 
for their baby feeding as giving up. Because I know that every person who has tried to feed their baby with their body and then makes a different decision has done so because it has been extremely difficult and because they are making a decision that is going to be best for their family. If you have ever been in that situation, I just want you to know you did the best you could and then you made the next right decision and that's okay. There are many decisions you are making as a parent and baby feeding is one of them. And sometimes in those early days and weeks, we hone in on feeding the baby with human milk, which of course it's really important because it's one of the primary things a baby does, but it's not the only decision we're making and we are weighing that against our own mental health. So I see you and I know you did the best you could and you didn't give up. You just changed the plan. Hi, Kalista. Okay, I just wanted to ask you, you are pregnant right now, right? Yes, 32 weeks. Okay, what are you most looking forward to when it comes to feeding your baby? The connection. Oh, that's so sweet. What do you imagine? After all the pain and stuff, I imagine us being able to like bond better because like I have that with her than anybody else. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a great day. If you too are looking forward to the connection you will have with bonding with your baby, I highly recommend that you hire an IBCLC prenatally and discuss how you can best set yourself up for success so that you fully understand the physiology of human milk making. You can hire me. I can often bill your insurance and you can find my information at www.quabinbirthservices.com. I can meet with you prenatally in person or virtually. And then whoever you decide to work with prenatally will already have a lot of your information so that if you do have any pain or difficulty once your baby is born, they, you, they will just be a text or a phone call away so that they can help you work through any difficulty. Now, this next guest that I interviewed works for an organization that I mentioned at the top of the show called It Takes a Village that provides a variety of supports for people in the hill towns of Western Mass. And I invited her to share some of the supports that they provide to families. And the reason I did so is because A, if you happen to live in that area, great, you can access those supports or you can volunteer your time. But B, more communities should have more supports like this. And so if you hear this and you think, what a brilliant idea, then I encourage you to think about how you could start something like this. Hi, I'm here with Lisa from It Takes a Village. Do you want to tell us about that? Sure. It Takes a Village provides free postpartum and early parenting support to families in Western Massachusetts. We provide free home visits. We have a distribution center that is a diaper bank. We have clothes, baby supplies, formula, breastfeeding supplies, all for free. And we do parent classes and support groups. And uh, yeah, we just love new families. We're all about that. Yes. And I have been to your family closet and gotten stuff with my kids. They love to go because it's free shopping. It's incredible. So thank you for all the support you offer families. Thank you. Yeah. It's almost like a misnomer when you say it's a closet because I don't think that people realize the enormity of the location. The location's in Huntington. And it's about a 2,000 square foot location where we try to set it up as much like a retail store or Babies or Us or something like that. And we were able to also keep things out of the landfill that way. So we have new and gently used items. It's wonderful. And then the in-home support that you offer newly postpartum families is so critical. Yes. Thank you for saying that. Yes. So we provide home visits of home visitors to go into families with Baby Center 1. We provide 12 weeks of visits, two hours per week for up to 12 weeks, and we can provide compassionate support. We also do non-clinical things like practical, doing the dish dishes, folding the laundry, holding the baby while the parent showers, providing referrals because we have so many connections throughout the valley as well. So 
it's a very meaningful experience, both for the volunteer and for the families. They almost become like second family to each other. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay, so Lisa, you told me that you breastfed your children for a long time. I did. I had two children. Now one is 13 and one is nine, but I breastfed them both outside the two-year mark. I breastfed them for about four years each, and it was an experience that I would never want to take back. It was a very special experience for me and my children. Do you have a favorite memory of breastfeeding? That's a good question. I think that the comfort period of reconnecting with my children if I was out when I had to work and so forth and coming home and being able to hold them in my arms and look them in the eye and just feel super connected to them that I think that would be my happiest experience that I can remember when it was yeah it was very special for both of my children in that period thank you so much that's lovely welcome you're welcome and uh, after breastfeeding them I was fortunate enough to be able to donate the milk to other families that needed it Even if someone can't breastfeed, there's always options that they might want to look into. I was very happy to be able to donate my breast milk to other families. Awesome. Thank you. Take care. Hi, Grace. Hi. What is your favorite memory when you think about breastfeeding your children? Oh, my gosh. That's such a great question. I think my most vivid memory is from when my first baby was newborn and in the NICU for her first eight days and I was pumping every three hours and making an enormous amount of very golden colostrum and just having bottles full of this bright yellow colostrum and feeling really very proud. That is really something to be proud of. Thank you. Awesome. Grace herself is a birth worker in Western Massachusetts. She has a doula business and she serves families in the Pioneer Valley and in Southern Vermont. She's not currently taking clients, but hopes to again soon. I will link her information in the show notes because she is amazing. And not only that, she's really supportive of other birth workers and people who serve families in the perinatal period. She was one of the people who organized this event. She's one of the first people that I met when I became a birth doula years ago as I was getting my feel of the landscape. And so Grace has a really special place in my heart. This next guest is a birth doula and she is a part of a group of birth doulas who they're really rising in numbers. She does not yet have children herself. And I find these group of people to be very special because they can really bring something to the birth community, offering their expertise and their ability to bring comfort and calm to the situation without bringing their own baggage and their own birth stories or birth trauma into the situation. So I find that to be so lovely that people are recognizing birth work and lactation work as a profession and be supportive of families even before they themselves have families. If you are considering hiring a birth doula or a lactation professional and you're wondering how they themselves could do the work without ever having had the experience themselves, It is very possible. What matters is that they have the right personality that matches what you're looking for and the training that you're looking for and that you jive with them as you're having the conversations. I was so happy to have this really interesting conversation with Irene. Hi, Irene. Hi. I wanted to know what your exposure to baby feeding has been as you were growing up and entered into adulthood. Growing up, I would see all the women in my family breastfeed their children. And it was just like the norm that you have to breastfeed your child. And we weren't, they weren't really given the option to not breastfeed their child. So yeah, that's been my experience. Oh, wow. So that's interesting because usually I hear the opposite, that people didn't really see people breastfeeding. And so now you have a different feeling about that. Does that make you feel like there is this pressure around breastfeeding? I mean, there's definitely a stigma. I think it's a cultural thing because I'm Dominican and we're immigrants. 
So it was just like we didn't have the resources to get powdered milk. So it was just it was just like, OK, you have to breastfeed your baby because that's all you have. So I feel like now that I have the privilege and I'm able to maybe get powdered milk or like other resources. Yeah, if I ever have a kid, I'll probably breast like breastfeed if I'm able to Let's- just because of the benefits and just like all the women in my family do it. And yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you. Hi, Tara. Hi, how are you? I'm good. So you're a fellow practitioner, but you also have one child. Yes, I do have one child. She's five. And one on the way, right? Yes, I'm 10 weeks now. <laughs> Congratulations. You, yeah, thank you. I know that from Facebook stalking. Uh, that's okay, thanks. <laughs> and I just wanted to ask, what was your favorite memory of baby feeding or your biggest struggle? I would say I don't really have a favorite memory. I did enjoy the time that I did get to spend nursing my first child. It was short-lived, about three months, and we had a lot of latching issues. Come to find out, my daughter has Williams syndrome, which often leads to a lot of feeding issues, and she wasn't diagnosed till she was almost four years old. And back then, I didn't know any of the things that I know now, so I didn't really have any help from lactation consultants or anybody. I was just trying my best, and she would latch and eat for 10 minutes and then unlatch and never latch back on. So eventually, I just started just pumping as much as I could and my milk dried up around three months so that was my biggest struggle was just that latching and just really learning how to feed my baby yeah wow that sounds difficult did you mourn that or did you really just tune in to what you needed to do um no I was definitely a little upset because I wanted to to body feed her as long as possible and I just wasn't able to I knew that doing what what, whatever was best for my baby so she could be fed and I think Back then, I didn't feel like it was as big of a deal. But now, looking back, I'm like, I wish I would have gotten help and been able to feed her longer from my body. Yeah, I understand that. And do you want to mention your services? Sure. So my name is Kayla Chatterton. I'm a full-spectrum doula, a sexual and reproductive health educator, and a placenta encapsulation specialist. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Women's Wellness. That's W-O-M-B-A-N-S Wellness. And my my website is the same name, womanswellness.net. <laughs> Great, thanks. Awesome, thanks so much. I recently sat down for a full interview with Kayla to educate myself and to be able to educate you all on Williams Syndrome. You'll be able to hear that full episode on Monday and hear the full story about how that impacted Kayla's body feeding journey. I hope that as you listen to people share their hopes for baby feeding, their reflections of how their baby feeding went, that you were able to dig into your treasure trove of memories and reflect on your own experiences and think about those flashes of memories that you will be considering in your old age, even if you only have one or two good memories of feeding your baby. I hope that those stand out and that you can hold on to them strongly. And you know what? Great memories of feeding her babies do not just have to be from the body. They can be with a bottle. They can be with solids because those are the moments when we're caring for them and making eye contact, forgetting about the busyness of our lives and just taking that time to connect with our babies. If you would like to connect with me and with other people who care about equity in human milk making, please join my Milk Making Minutes community group on Facebook. That is where we talk about the inequities that make feeding our babies so difficult. I would love to see you there. And one more thing, did you know that you can now watch the Milk Making Minutes on YouTube or listen if that's your preferred place to listen? So episodes are there. Bye. Hi, Julie. Hi. Do you want to have a baby someday? Yes. What are you most looking forward to when it comes to feeding your baby? That I can best feed her. Yeah? What do you think will be good about that? That I don't don't really have to get out milk from my body into a bottle. 
Oh, so you can just feed her right there from your body. Yeah. Great. Thanks so much. Bye.